Insured Nomads proudly supports the New Nomad podcast. Insured Nomads for the evolution of insurance, for the revolution of travel. For all your travel, medical, and support needs, please visit our website at insurednomads.com. We support our location-independent community worldwide. Welcome to the New Nomad Podcast, hosted by Alan and Andrew of Insured Nomads. Join us as Alan and Andrew interview and explore the community of people and ideas that embody the nomadic spirit. Tune in to incredible discussions with thought leaders each week that will help you take full advantage of the cross-border remote work lifestyle. Now here are your hosts. Welcome to the New Nomad Podcast, the podcast that supports digital workers, remote workers, digital nomads, folks that are just interested in exploring the world. We have a great guest today, Anna Maria Kohanska is with us today. Somebody who's traveled about, been in Balkans and Barcelona and other locations that I know we'll get into today. Really excited to talk to her about how she consults and helps with people to, to live this lifestyle and have companies that, that have inquiries and uh, has been a noted speaker at different presentations. You know, Chris, I'm going to bring in my co-host today, Chris Nam. You know, Chris, one thing I've seen about digital nomads is there doesn't seem to be a, a kind of an age difference in the sense that you and I are two completely different generations. But You know, my generation, it's more more about rewirement, where people go out, they're near the end of their career, they want different food and different language. You know, quick thing, when you you look at folks and you see some of these digital nomad communities, what really sticks out to you uh, is the driving force. And then we'll bring Anna Maria in. Yeah, for sure. Well, good to good to be here as a co-host. But yeah, I mean, that being said, I feel like a lot of digital nomads these days are motivated by the idea behind seeing new things, experiencing new things, and just getting out of their own culture. For me, I'm living outside of my home country of South Korea. I've lived in four different countries. The reason behind that was my dad wanted something new. He was a surgeon in Korea, hated the life. And so he wanted to pick up business, got into golf. So that's kind of the expat life, expatriate, immigrant life. But same goes for digital nomads. A lot of people that I've been chatting with lately are saying, you know, they want to get out of their, you know, boring life, whether it's an office life, whether it's school, whether it's after graduating, they want to see the world before they get back into it, either a corporate world or just more school. So that is kind of, you know, experiencing new things, eating new food. For me, when I travel, I like to look at the food, plan all of my travel around food. So that's something, you know, worth thinking about. And, you know, it's just, there's so many different things to going even just two hours down a car ride like there's it's a whole new world so yeah i think that's just the motivation tremendous factor. tremendous and and of course we'll bring anna marie in it and certainly a two-hour car ride in the balkans can get you to a completely different country depending on the uh the border crossing but also you've been somebody who's been been quite a speaker on future of work ideal lifestyle i'd love it if uh anna marie if you could do a quick uh overview for your audience for our audience of your travels and what brings you today to this remote work lifestyle that you've lived in. and certainly i've been following you on many of your conversations about the excitement in Mostar and Dubrovnik and other places in the Balkans. So we'd love quickly to, to share your story. Sure. So hi, all. Well, so I have been like a nomad, uh, I think we can say since 2017. I started like working remotely like long before like, you know, COVID hit. I worked then with um, pharma companies, helping them with digital transformation. That was my background. But then eventually with time, I also moved more into remote work and consulting about remote work and helping companies to adapt to remote work. And then as I was like traveling as a nomad myself, I also started to speak about remote work and digital nomadism. And then I was also contacted by a couple of organizations that wanted to bring like uh, remote workers to their country. And they were, you know, like wondering what can they do best, like how to adapt their strategy to make that happen. And that all uh, yeah came into place since like, mm, I would say maybe 2020, I actually spent considerable amount of time in Balkans in different countries like by now I think I visited almost all Balkan countries so that started like in COVID times there was just less restrictions and you could still travel as a nomad and have experiences even in in that difficult period and then like with that of course comes like better uh, knowledge of uh, what you can actually find here like how people live here and 
for me, I realized that actually there are lots of opportunities here because those countries are like very unknown and they have really great potential. And generally, I think like Balkans are underestimated like on the nomad scene. I mean, when I visited the Balkans, and this was just before the pandemic, first off, the quality of life was tremendous. The cost of living is is low. And I didn't have any trouble finding Wi-Fi or, or people to speak and meet with. And when Chris talks about food, fantastic food, uh, I also enjoy you know going to places that brew beer, et cetera. There's, there's no shortage uh, of that too. So what do you think is, if you're looking and you're consulting with an organization, do you suggest to them to first find a place that might have digital nomad visas and then look at it? Or do they mostly look at what's the quality of life first and then we'll figure out you know how we can get people to work there? What's your typical suggestions for folks if I'm listening to this podcast and I say, you know what? I do want to come work in the Balkans, but I don't know where in the Balkans and and how should I evaluate? Other than I would reach out to you for direction, but mm -hmm. your, your thoughts. Like individual people, uh, individual nomads, right? Yeah. I think it, it's really, yeah. first it comes like uh, to knowing what we actually looking forward because we always talk about these nomad destinations like if it, everybody was the same, which is not really true. And I think that now, especially after COVID, that this group of nomads and remote workers is growing so much then also different subgroups of people start to appear like different group of nomads you know and they have different needs so i would start like from here what we actually need like you know like someone in their 20s a single person they may actually have different needs than someone that has a family or even someone that's in their 40s and maybe have a couple right the questions they even make when they ask about destination are the same like for instance lot, lots of single males they would ask me like how is the dating scene right and that seems to be a big factor when they take the decision if should go there uh, somewhere or not but maybe it's not something that if you travel with a you know family or with even with a group of friends and you have that social part already covered then it's something you don't wonder about so first thing for me is like you need really to know what you are actually looking for, uh, to and i don't see that awareness in a lot of nomads yet like usually the question is very generic the question is is that a good place for nomads so then my question would be for what kind of nomads what actually is important to you right this is like you should ask me first and then I can guide you properly because for instance when we talk about Balkans so the kind of nomads that could for instance like Croatia is not the same kind of nomad that could like for instance Albania or Bosnia and Herzegovina because here for instance in Bosnia where I have been recently Bosnia and Herzegovina that's the destination for adventure sport and outdoor right so if someone appreciate that they have a great food but that's not a place for vegetarians for instance right we have to take all that into account like if you really care about mediterranean life and you know you really want to have beaches and sailing right? then croatia right but like you need to know first what actually matters to you a part of the good uh, cost of life because that's that probably it's um, yeah quite good in all of those countries maybe like croatia being uh, probably more westernized so with better infrastructure but then also with higher costs than comparing to maybe other less developed countries so there is that and of course, yeah, of course, if That's you go tremendous. like somewhere where already is a big group of nomads, then it's probably because there is already a big group of nomads. It's easier to maybe even without knowing what you look for um, to, maybe you can get some of your needs met because already lots of people check that place. But in Balkans, to be honest, we don't really have yet like in any place that big community, maybe with exception of Bansko in Bulgaria. But some people don't even consider Bulgaria as a Balkans because they, they concentrate more or on these ex-Yugoslavian countries when they talked about Balkans. But in other countries, you would have like those smaller communities quite spread around different countries and different cities. And then it's up to you to know what actually you, you look for, uh, for to be able to decide where you want to go. It's interesting to me when I traveled in the Balkans, even the big cities like, well, like Sarajevo or, or Dubrovnik seemed very easy to live in and get around. And then the, even the smaller cities like most are so pretty and beautiful. I just felt that it really was a tremendous place. And I could see somebody spending time there and really getting to know folks. Do you feel like the digital nomad community that visits those locations are, you know, regarded as 
something that that they're ha- people are happy to see them there and are they making a positive impact on the on the local communities as they come in or how are you perceived if you show up in one of those locations so you see a lot of digital nomads they are still very disconnected from any local communities if they are in any way connected at best is to other nomads that happen to be in the city if they manage to have common group but from the locals and any kind of like local entrepreneurs freelancers usually it's kind of still like a ghetto of nomads that just hang out together in nice places because they also can afford usually better places and go to better restaurants this is still a mainstream how it looks in most countries not just in Balkans but uh, almost everywhere by now I started actually to organize like some events you know in my last destination to actually um, create like the bridge to connect actually nomad with locals because I think like when we are doing that neither we are like really getting full benefits of traveling neither we are even allowing the locals to help us and have like that full experience and of course we are not giving anything back so it's like a little bit like going for the barbecue for me and eating just veggies like (laughs) you don't do (laughs) that's not the plan if you just go for the place and hang out with other nomads just like you are missing a big thing here and uh, of course like because we have very specific lifestyle and many people many locals they maybe don't understand the reasons and how it all works so of course we need a group um, of people we can relate to and for sure nomads can provide that but I believe like the best groups like that will bring you the most benefits is like mixed group and then you will have like some locals and some nomads and ideally they can hang out together and do things together and then you will be able like to actually have have some impact on them and they will be able to have some impact on you and that's how I see travel and that's also what usually you would maybe promote longer term stays because you become like more engaged you feel like you are actually making some impact you your presence there matters and you connect with real people you can make friends and then you can stay like few months which is like now a slow mud is right that becoming very popular or maybe you can come like you know next year and go to the same place and connect again and there are lots of places and initiatives like things that you could connect with locals through but it comes to the fact the first you have to actually look for that but this comes like from both places like when I talk with organization I told them that that's something that from they can do from their side right like you provide contacts for nomads where they can connect with local people what they can do if they want you know to have conversation to make friends and then from nomad perspective you have to be open to that like you have to join those events if they are even there here for instance in Mostar there is one great place which is like Mostar Rock School and you, when you think about that so what you can do is basically like join the community if you play in any instrument then you can play if you don't play you can learn but if you don't play and you don't want to learn you can just join like jam sessions you still will meet like you know amazing people that are there that live there and you will meet them through music which is always a great way to connect right so it doesn't have to be always like super serious that we must organize like big conference and we must talk like super serious stuff We can also connect through like, you know, this entertainment activities like music or dance or just organizing like a barbecue all together and trying local food. There are so many ways to do that. But I believe it's like first step is actually like, you know, showing up and wanting to do that. Go ahead, Chris. You're next. (laughs) I was just going to say that's that's a really good way to put, you know, just the digital nomad life. I feel the need for just a quick question i i've chatted with a few digital nomads in the last two weeks just to kind of you know get a sense of what they do and how we can work with them but a lot of single people who you know you just mentioned about five minutes ago they're wanting to a few of them that i talked to they had a bad breakup and they're wanting to leave their current situation and they're traveling abroad to become slow mads to just kind of experience the wild do you as somebody that's been in that field for a while do you see a lot of people who are trying to escape from reality (laughs) so there is that perception that a lot of nomads just like you know are commitment folks and that's why they are traveling all the time so they want to belong anywhere you know it's really hard to know like the real motives like why inside out if someone just uh, got a bad breakup and they are like nomadic because of that or maybe they just want to see more of the world 
uh, or maybe they just like, you know, uh, they are just trying and they don't even know what they are looking uh, for. I don't think it's that important. Like, why do you even start? You basically leaving your comfort zone and you are like allowing, you know, the life to unfold, like, and you are trying new experience. What is important for me is to be open. No matter the reason we start, like we have to be open for, to mm. what happens to new people, new cultures. Especially like, you know, if you are traveling somewhere, the culture is very different than you are used to. So you're not supposed to judge immediately, but like try to understand like, okay, they are like that. But is there the reason they behave like that? Why is that? Like, can I live with that? Like without that making me unhappy or not? But we, we're not supposed to judge them for like our uh, position. Also, like this is not how we would do things in Poland or in Germany, right? Because then you will not be happy anywhere like that. But, and then again, like what I mentioned about, for instance, connecting with locals. So if someone left the country because they had like whatever personal problems, so usually that's even more important that you focus on doing something good, something meaningful in your life, right? Because that, that's what gonna help you to mm -hmm. focus on something else and overcome that. And that could be, for instance, a lot of people, they find actually kind of like, you know, uh, they start to see the world in a positive view when they help others, for instance. So so we also started like initiative, for instance, in Cape Verde with volunteering in local organization, because when you think that your own life is maybe not, you are not happy enough, even if that's just very subjective, right? Because I often think that a lot of nomads has much more than any local person, like in terms of, you know, like education and economical means and even the social support. But if in your perception, you don't have enough, then actually giving back is it's that the ironic thing is that when you give back and volunteer and try to make a positive impact, what you get from those people is more than you give. That's something I would never expect. So even if someone just thinks about they, themselves, the best way to make yourself happy is to help others because you will get so much more than you give that eventually that will make you feel better. That's tremendous. There's, there's actually yeah. a lot of studies to indicate that. And you know, Anna Maria, the other thing about, you know, Chris's point of travel. So on one end, you have people traveling sometimes to leave relationships or change relationships. The other thing is there are people at the other end of the spectrum that reach a point in their life that said, you know, I've been at my desk for 35 years. I want to see the world. And I love something that you you wrote up that I, I totally agree with that, you know, like one year of nomad life could, could equal like five years of sedentary life and with the things you learn and experience. And, and a lot of studies also seem to indicate that if you're adventurous, you get more out of this. And it sounds like you're an adventurous person. You've moved from different places. You meet adventurous people. What I like about these communities is even some of the digital nomads, even if they aren't the most adventurous people, they can meet people who will still support them and give them community. So that's a big issue is community. So I love your comment, uh, whether it's, and everybody's different. Somebody might be one year of nomad life, is five years of sedentary. Some people might be one in three, but you learn so many more things. So a quick question for you as you've traveled about on your own personal journey, what have you really learned about yourself? And it's a great example to others that every journey, no matter how adventurous we are, we learn something new and different. Yeah. So you see, I I think there are actually three stages of traveling because when I started myself, even before I was a nomad, what I wanted is basically to see the world, like the, the, all the beautiful places, meet people, um, try different food, like go to amazing places, dance around the world. That's what I wanted. The more of that, the better, right? Only the money and time was an issue. Uh, the second stage when I was actually realizing it's not just about seeing places but everything that I learned in the process right because that, that process happens even if you don't think about it like you traveling and you are becoming a different person you are learning different skills and there are like lots of them you know like problem problem solving for once like flexibility I think even faster thinking like uh, adaptability uh, communication like uh, you practice different languages so it's just like so many personal skills skills I think that you learn that you realize you actually becoming a different person you know like you are able to see different perspective much faster a lot of nomads they also become entrepreneurs because they see like different things being implemented in different countries they got lots of different ideas they start to process them and they got the outputs right there is that part that you can't just collect the um, experiences but you need to process them to make sense of them so the, that part is very important like you have to internalize what's actually learned 
but that would be the the second step where you actually it's traveling that um, it's changing you you are becoming different person but that stage is still about you right it's just like you are becoming better person you are becoming different person you are learning things because the world is teaching you things the first stage for me is when you are like okay so i have got so much out of that that i also want to give back I want to have some impact. So for me, it also came at some point like, okay, but now what? I could, of course, visit more countries and I could probably learn even more things. But what do I want to do with that? Right. And then I realized but I can also give at least part of that to other people that contributed to my growth. I, with all what I know already, I can mentor other people. I can help them. I can have an impact. And that specially applies to the destination less developed. You know, when we travel to the countries that may be even remote work is new for them maybe they don't even speak like you know english uh, maybe everything about technology is new for them so you just by showing up you are an excellent example that all their life is possible that they can do something else that they can have hope and in that sense like for me that journey it came to the point that i want to have like real impact i want to go somewhere and not only have fun but also change at least the life of one person maybe that's there show something to those people make like the connection but when i'm gone i want that someone thinks about what i have said and maybe that inspires them you know to look for remote work too or to travel or maybe to open their own business and and then i think like it actually matters like because the, the remote work and nomadism a part of the fact that's a lot of fun it can be also a tool to change the whole world i think if we see that from that perspective so this is the time of the podcast we typically ask, and you've shared a couple of things with us. Would you like to share an overlooked person, place, or experience with us? Because I know you've, you've, you've seen some really amazing places and you don't necessarily have to limit yourself. Right. To one. <laughs> so look for a winter Cape Verde. Uh, I have been there the last winter and I'm going back again. That's really, really great place. Uh, very affordable, uh, very safe. Uh, you don't have winter, right? So it's basically like 10 different islands, but we have, uh, we are actually building a community on one of them. And on that island, which is in Mindelo, that's actually a cultural capital. So there is a lot of amazing life, music and dance culture. Even if it's a small place, there is a lot of that. And for summer, I generally think that Balkans is an amazing place to be. But like people can also look, uh, I think Croatia is becoming now more now. So people like have that on the map, but they can look more than that. Like for instance, Albania or Bosnia and Herzegovina or Montenegro are also amazing places for nomads. For me, because the weather matters a lot, I would probably be there between like spring and autumn. But that's again depends like what matters to people. Because for instance, in Bosnia and Herzegovina is also great for uh, spot for ski right so if someone is into that very affordable and they have really uh, lots um, like at least 20 places where you can ski then coming in winter would be also a great place but generally uh, balkans because the cost of life is very low so you can play with geo arbitrage uh, the place is very safe but the things that also matters a lot to me is because we are very welcome here like for me, it matters a lot. I don't want to go to a country that right, for instance, on the walls, nomad, go to your country. I don't want that. So if you don't want me there, I'm not going there, you know. I want to be in a place where they are happy that they came there because then like the treatment that you get from locals, the whole experience that you get is much better and at the low cost like and that in both of those places like Cape Verde but also like Balkan countries they are very happy that uh, you are actually there because it's not many of us there and then like all your experience is completely different not only it's not touristic places not overcrowded you can get great deals but also people will really like go out of their way to help you so it's not just politeness but they literally will stop doing whatever they were doing <laughs> so you uh, they can help you like for instance, if I go to, I don't know, any Western country and I'm a bit lost and I ask about the direction, of course, people are going to help me because that's how we are educated. We are polite, right? But that comes only out of politeness. Other than that, they don't really care. But if you go to Balkans and you ask about the direction, then they're going to walk with you because God forbid you got lost and you don't find your destination. So you see like the difference in, I think there is more authenticity and that's something that also matters for me a lot. 
Yeah, that, that's awesome. I mean, I would love to live that kind of digital nomad life soon. And what you are describing is just like, you know, wow, I want to go to these places, experience these new people, new environments, new, you know, everything about travel. It just, you know, I've opened up a organization here where I, where I am in Birmingham, Alabama last year because I went on a random trip to Hawaii by myself. I went to Atlanta, Georgia, just to meet some friends with an overnight bag with one pair of, you know, socks and underwear and shirt and pants. That was it with my laptop. That night I was talking to them and they said, yeah, I mean, Hawaii is cool. And then I said, okay. So I booked a ticket that night and then I flew over that the next morning and I stayed there for a week and it really just opened up my mind to everything new and I tried different things. I even changed my career path. So yeah, I think definitely, you know, the digital nomad lifestyle, that's just something that everybody needs to experience, I think, from for from my opinion, at least once in their lifetime. But yeah, I mean, all that being said, uh, Anna Maria. Where can we find you, whether that's online presence or offline in, you know, the next few months? Where are you going to be? So I'm actually going to Cape Verde. I will stay there in the winter. So like uh, in person in Cape Verde, (laughs) you are invited. We're going to organize like events there because we are growing the community together with Gonzalo Hall, which probably everybody knows, right? Yeah. So I'm collaborating with him to grow the community there. And we are also going to run like some volunteering projects there for people to be able to give back. So that's like at least until the spring, but like online. So everybody is welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn or Facebook, Instagram. It's just like my name, Anna Maria Kochańska, and you can find me there. The profile is open. So I also share there like what we are doing uh, and generally also like tips and my insights on nomad life and remote work. And yeah, I'm always happy to connect with new and uh, not so new (laughs) nomads. Thank you. And, you know, we'll make sure, folks, that uh, the show notes have this information so you don't have to scribble furiously through the uh, the podcast. We'll make sure that we have Anna Maria's information for you. Really enlightening podcast today. And and I'll mention this as an aside item. You know, just before the pandemic, I did have the distinct pleasure to go to Dubrovnik, Mostar, Sarajevo, and onto Kosovo through Albania, through one of the most wonderful canyons I've ever seen in my life. You know, for many of you listening to this podcast in the United States, we know the Grand Canyon. There's a tremendous canyon in in Montenegro that you drive through that uh, is one of the wonders. Uh, So I would really suggest you getting in touch with uh, Anna Maria, but also exploring that part of the world. The people were wonderful and a tremendous experience uh, on that. So as I tied together today's podcast, you know, what did I learn today? First off, there's a burgeoning opportunity for you out there, folks, to to go to places like Mostar, uh, whether it's slow mad travel or moving through faster than that or, or putting your roots down and getting a digital nomad visa. The cost of living is tremendous low. The food is great. The people are very welcoming. And you have Anna Maria as a resource, once again, that we'll put in the show notes. So with that, those of us at the New Nomad Podcast, hope you travel safely and securely. We look forward to catching you in another episode. And we thank Anna Maria for joining us today and Chris for co-hosting. Have a great uh, travel ahead. Cheers. Insured Nomads proudly supports the New Nomad Podcast. Insured Nomads for the evolution of insurance for the revolution of travel. For all your travel, medical, and support needs, please visit our website at insurednomads.com. We support our location-independent community worldwide. Thanks for tuning in to the New Nomad Podcast, where we bring together an incredible community of people and ideas that embody the nomadic spirit. Please remember to subscribe and leave a review. For more amazing tips to help you take advantage of the cross-border lifestyle, please visit us at insurednomads.com forward slash podcast. See you next week.